In Surah 96, verse 2, Quran, 96.2, the Quran says, Kulakal insana min alak, which means, Allah, created a human being from alak. The accepted meaning of alak, is the initial embryonic stage when it is in the form of a leech-like clot of blood clinging to or suspended from the uterus wall. At this stage, although there is a rudimentary form of the human cardiovascular, blood circulatory, system, the heart has not started beating, and the embryo has not yet acquired distinct human characteristics. 2. Later revealed Surah, Surah number 86. However, the Quran speaks of another ingredient or raw material, other than alak, which has gone into the making of insan. Verses 5 to 8 of this surah run as follows, Falyanjaral insanu min makulik. Kulika minman daafiq. Yakruju min beni sulbi waterai, inahu Allah rajahi lakadir. Insan, should then consider by what, means, they have been created. They have been made by, means of, gushing fluid. Which, fluid, comes out from between the spine and the ribs. Verily it is indeed capable of being returned. 3. I am aware that the translation I have given is not the orthodox one. But then, as anybody can see, the orthodox translation has deviated from the plain meaning of the words used in the Quran to suit the translator's ideas about the message the verses are conveying. 4. The preconceived idea of the translators is that the gushing fluid, referred to what I was saying about verses of Surah number 86, is semen that spurts out of the male organ, penis, during the sexual act. But with this preconceived idea, the translators had a problem. Semen does not gush out from between the backbone and the ribs, nor, for that matter, is it produced there. Then, is the word of Allah, Na'azubillah, wrong? No, explain the translators. The semen-producing organs are embedded initially, in the fetus, between the backbone and the ribs. Still, they gradually descend, until the child's birth, to their position, at birth, between the legs. 5. Even an adolescent can say that the translator's above explanation is nothing but stretching their imaginations in a vain bid to justify their interpretation of the divine verses. There are other explanations given, which are equally unconvincing. Such justifications cannot but cast doubts on the integrity as of the Quran as the word of Allah. And Allah says of the Quran, Zalakal Kitabu Lareba Fihi. This is the book wherein there is no doubt, Quran, 2.2, 6. The Quran itself says that the meanings of some of the verses may not be apparent to humankind initially for some time because of the limits of its, humankind's, knowledge. But, soon will we show them our signs in the regions, and their own souls, until it becomes manifest to them that this, Quran, is the truth, Quran, 41.53. Therefore, true believers must stick to the plain meaning of Quranic verses and refrain from devious interpretations, even when the primary intention is not understandable. The expanding sphere of human knowledge may make the meaning clear at some future point in time. 7. The plain meaning of the verses under consideration, Quran, 86.5-7, is that Allah created insan, utilizing the fluid that gushes out from the cavity enclosed by the back on one side and the ribs on the other. At the time, in the 7th century AD, when these verses were revealed, people could not understand the full implication of the verses. The level of their knowledge about the intricacies of the human body was too low. They could not then understand as to what fluid could gush out of the said cavity. It was only 10 centuries later, when the English physician, William Harvey Asterisk, announced his discovery of blood circulating the body in a closed circuit that humanity clues to the other required things became aware of blood gushing out of the heart located in the cavity formed by the ribs and the backbone. Now we know how the pumping action of the heart makes the blood gush out into the aorta. So now we know what fluid it is that gushes out from the exact place described in the Quran. The fluid is nothing but blood. Why, then, do we, the modern age people, not accept this simple truth? Why do we still insist that the fluid is semen when deep down in our hearts, we know that semen does not spurt out from the spot in the human body, so precisely described in the said verses? 8. After creating the first man and woman by Allah, semen, of course, is the source derived from man to produce Adam and Eve's succeeding progeny. But semen is not the only source. The other source is the female egg. However, neither of these two sources can be the ready-to-use materials from which insan is created. After fertilization, the two sources have to undergo numerous changes until the formation in the uterus of what Allah calls alak. Now, this alak, is the ready-to-use material with which insan, is created as stated by Allah himself, Quran, 96.2. 9. With the tremendous advances made in human knowledge during the last 13 centuries since the revelation of the Quran, we now know that alak, or the leech-shaped embryo in the mother's womb, has the rudimentary, undeveloped, forms of the heart and the network of blood vessels. The rudimentary heart and blood vessel network are filled with blood, the tiny embryo's distinctive blood and not the mother's, but there is no heartbeat in consequent blood circulation. Alak, is thus merely the source of a human being, humanity created importantis, but it is not an insan, yet. Except for the cardiovascular system, no other organ system has reached a functional state therein. There is not even a rudimentary formation of any other distinctly human organ at this stage. 10. The Quran 96.2, says, I repeat, that alak, is the material from which insan, is created. But alak, is not insan, it is the only raw material for the latter. Something else, other than alak, is therefore logically required to create insan. My humble submission is that verses, 86.5 to 8, provide clues to the other required things. This other thing cannot be semen for the apparent reason that semen has already gone into the making of alak. 11. As explained already, the gushing fluid referred to in verses, Quran, 86.5 to 8, could only be blood. One may, however, ask, how could blood be the thing, other than alak, from which a living insan, is created, when blood might be part of alak, itself? 
Yes, it is not blood, per se, which is the other thing required, but the gushing fluid, blood, together with the motive force behind it, is necessary to convert a lack into a living thing and son. 12. When blood stops gushing out of the heart, life ceases to exist. As a necessary corollary to this statement of fact, one must admit that life begins when the heart in the embryo starts ticking, and blood starts gushing out from that place at the beginning of the fourth week after conception. With this gushing blood that primitive organs are formed, and the embryo takes a distinctly human shape by the end of the eighth week. Without this gushing blood, the embryo would not develop into the infant, capable of coming out into the world and living therein. Even after birth, the gushing blood's creating and producing work continues until the infant turns into a fully developed insan. This gushing blood sustains every cell of the body by regularly supplying oxygen and nourishment, draining out waste from that place. Without this gushing blood, the cells would all be dead, life would cease to exist, and there would be no insan. 13. In the light of the this discussion, is there any doubt now that along with a lack, it is the blood gushing out of the heart utilizing which insan has been created and sustained? Is there any doubt now that the gushing fluid referred to in the verses, Quran, 86.5 and 6, is not semen but blood gushing out of the heart? Is there any doubt now that the said verses had revealed a scientific truth in the 7th century when the truth dawned on the scientific world only over a thousand years later? Is there any doubt now that the Quran is the book of Allah? Only those who have doubts are, deaf, dumb, blind and therefore do not understand, Quran, 2.171. 14. The verse, Quran, 86.8, is generally translated to mean that Allah can resurrect insan, on the day of judgment, after his death in this world. The critical word in the verse is Rajayi. Rajay, of course, means return. But what does high, telling him, pertain to, to important to gushing fluid, both referred to in the preceding verses. In the traditional translation, of course, high, has been taken to mean his and is construed to pertain to insan, occurring in the earlier verse number 5. But the interpretation of verse number 8, thus made, appears to be somewhat contrived. This contrivance was naturally expected from interpreters or translators at the time of the revelation of the verses and for centuries later, because of the limitation of human knowledge about the intricacies of the human body at that time. If the verse were interpreted to mean that the gushing fluid could be returned to where it originated, it would make no sense to the people living then. But now, this interpretation would make sense and be a natural corollary to the performance given to the immediately preceding verses as mentioned 15. Look at the implication of this interpretation. The Holy Quran had revealed the fact of blood circulation in the human body, long back in the 7th century, whereas the world of science came to know of it about a thousand years later. 16. But, alas, most of humanity would persist in being Sumyunim, Bukman, Umayyan, Fa'am la Yakulun, Quran, 2.171. Note. It has come to my knowledge that blood circulation was first discovered, not by William Harvey, but by a Muslim, Ibn Nafis, in the 12th century AD itself. But, even then, the fact remains that blood circulation was first revealed earlier, in the Quran.